Greetings and blessings in this new year. The year we leave behind was a year of challenges for our monastery, but also one of many consolations and much encouragement. By God's mercy, our brotherhood continues to grow. We not only clothed a new novice and tonsured a new monk, but Lord willing, in the first half of this year, there will be three more men coming to join us in taking their first steps in the monastic life. In the past year, we have also seen our new temple begin to rise. Our new contractor began work on the project at the start of the year, correcting some structural issues with the foundation walls and moving the whole construction forward. West Virginia's winter meant that it was slow going in the early months of the year. But then in the spring, we had a great blessing. In April, for the very first time, we received a visitation of the miracle-working, quick-to-hear icon of the Theotokos from St. Tikhon's Monastery in Pennsylvania. This precious icon was brought to us personally by Archimandrite Sergius, the abbot of St. Tikhon's. We greeted the arrival of the Mother of God with festive bell-ringing hymns and prayers. We placed the icon in the middle of our little chapel, and our brotherhood prayed and kept watch before her in turns for the entire weekend. After the liturgy on Sunday, we received another great spiritual gift. With the blessing of the ever-memorable Metropolitan Ilarion, our Commandrite Sergius tonsured our own Father Anthony into the great schema, the highest degree of Orthodox monasticism. At the end of the tonsure service, our Commandrite Sergius expressed to us his confidence that the Mother of God herself had come to remove the obstacles that had been hindering the church construction. Immediately afterward, we carried the holy icon in procession to the construction site. Right on the spot where the new temple will one day stand, we served a supplicatory muleban, begging the Mother of God quick to hear for her speedy intercession on behalf of our ongoing building efforts. We implored the Theotokos for her help, and she truly was quick to hear and act. Within just a few days of her visit, the masonry work began in earnest on the new church, and the building finally began to rise above ground right before our eyes. With grateful hearts, we have continued every Friday at noon to serve a muleban before the large reproduction of the quick-to-hear icon that St. Tikhon's Monastery so graciously gave us. Since that eventful weekend, construction has continued unabated. Glory be to Christ our God and to His Most Pure Mother. As the building has moved forward, we're already seeing how significant this temple will be, not just for our monastery, but for the witness of orthodoxy in our country. In fact, we have learned from our construction foreman that several of the West Virginia master craftsmen now working on the new temple actually requested to be on this particular project as opposed to other jobs to which they could have been easily assigned closer to their own homes. None of these men are Orthodox, and yet they say they are willing to drive all the way out to our monastery in the middle of nowhere because they know this new church is going to be something special, and they want to be a part of it. It will be something special. There's no doubt about it. That said, our remote location coupled with the unavoidable delays and dramatic price increases for many of the essential building materials required means that this church is going to cost considerably more than we had originally anticipated. But with God's help and your support, we are pressing on. So far, our brotherhood has invested our entire savings of over $1.6 million dollars and now we have begun tapping into the $2.2 million that you, our generous benefactors, have already given. But much more will soon be required. We now know 
that finishing and furnishing this new church will cost much more. When we look at the construction bills we are currently paying each month, we project that we will be able to continue building at full speed until May or June. At that time, however, without a miracle, our funds will be exhausted and we will have to stop the church construction until the Lord provides a way to continue. That is why I am coming to you today. Will you help us finish the new church of the exaltation of the Holy Cross? Then will you continue to stand with us and help us build the essential housing for the men God is still calling to the monastic life here at Holy Cross? Many of you have already given very generously, and for that we are tremendously grateful. But our work here in the hills of West Virginia is just beginning. We won't be able to finish building the walls of our new Jerusalem without your ongoing support. Christ said, we are to be the light of the world, that a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Please help us build this city set on a hill so that our life of prayer and worship will not stay hidden in this remote holler of West Virginia, but will be an ever brighter light to our neighbors, to our nation, and to the whole world. God bless you.